Let's start by creating a new React project and opening it on Visual Studio Code. Now we need to install the i18 Next and React i18 Next libraries. For now, let's run the project to see if it's working. We will start by creating a translation directory and inside it, we will create a directory for each language. In this case, English and Spanish. Inside the English directory, we will create a global.json file. This file will store the different strings that we will use in the application. To make it simple, we will add a header and a home section, and inside them, we will add a welcome message and a brief introduction of the application. We will create another global.json file inside the Spanish directory. You can organize this JSON file however you like, and you can even divide it in different files. So you could have a different JSON file for each section or component of your application. In this case, to make it simple, we will have everything on a single file. Next, we will import these JSON files inside the index file. We will use a different suffix for each language. After that, we will initialize the i18 next object. I suggest to set escape value to true instead of false like I'm doing here because it helps mitigate XSS attacks. We will specify English as the default language and we are going to associate the JSON files we made for each language. As you can see, the attribute is called global on each language, but each one uses a different JSON file. Next, we are going to grab the application in the IAC provider and we are going to pass the IAC object we just made. This way, we will have access to the translations in the whole application. Now let's create a components directory and a home component inside it. We will keep it very simple. Let's also create a header component. Let's keep them simple for now. We will add these two components to the app component. Let's go back to the home component and start making use of our translations. For this, we will use the use translation hook provided by the React i18 Next library. We will pass it global as a parameter to make use of the translations of that file. We can also pass multiple ones as an array. This hook returns an array with a translation function and the i18next object. To use the translation function, we pass the key we want to access. In this case, it's home.body as we declared in the JSON file. As you can see, the text is displayed correctly and it's using English as the default language. Let's do the same for the header component. We need to use the use translation hook again to make use of the translations. We need to use the use translation hook again. Let's use the translation function and use the header message from the JSON file. Now we will make a function to switch between languages when clicking a button. This function will receive a language as a parameter. We will use the change language function of the i18n object returned from the use translation hook to switch the language. Now, let's add a button and pass English as a parameter. And we will add a second one and pass Spanish. As you can see, the language changes and we can see the translation. Don't forget to subscribe if you found this video useful and write a comment with your suggestions of what React.js tutorial would you like me to do next.